Okay, so welcome here, everybody. Uh, thanks for joining us for our another Indigenous Insight uh, series. We're going to be learning about the uh, Battle of Seven Oaks uh, together. So these are open book uh, trivia games. Uh, that means you've got all the time you need to look it up and learn. Uh, so uh, you don't, well, you get some points for answering correct, but that's kind of given because we're all here to learn. Uh, what you really score points for is uh, answering quick. So if you got if you're good on Google, uh, you've got a good chance uh, to win. Uh, we're giving away a uh, book by Catherine Burmett um, about the Pemmican Wars. It's a, it's a graphic novel. Uh, but our uh, bookstore that we partnered, partnered up with doesn't uh, ship outside Canada, unfortunately. So um, we got a, some guests from the U.S. I, we didn't know we were we were getting this big, so we've got to think think ahead, I guess. Anyway, um, welcome here, everybody. So if anyone's not logged in, just let me know, uh, so so I don't start without you. And uh, here we go. Okay, so the first question, boom. Okay, the Battle of Seven Oaks was the culmination of what? If you answer right now, you get. 97 points. Now it's 96. See how that works? Okay, so you got you got time to figure this out. The Battle of Seven Oaks was the culmination of what? A, the Tobacco Plains War. Uh, B, the Red River Rebellion. Uh, C, the Pemmican Wars. Or D, the Northwest Rebellion. So just uh, go over to crowdper.com, sorry, crowd.live, and enter the code VNI72 if you haven't yet, and then uh, click on the answer you uh, you think is right. Oh, it's gonna ask you for a nickname too. That's sort of to track the scores, okay? So uh, I can see we've got four votes already, okay. And we've got six participants, you see, in the chat here, so I'll give. Okay, that's everybody, because, uh, yeah. <laughs> okay, cool. Thanks for your patience. I'm uh, working out a few kinks. There's a lot of stuff going on. I don't have my co-host host with me. So let's see how everybody voted. Okay, so most people voted for four. <laughs> Sorry, most people voted for, four people voted for uh, C, uh, the Pemmican Wars. And the correct answer is C. So way to go, everybody. <laughs> we learned something already. And let's see who, how quick you answered, because that's the uh, important thing. So let's take a look here. All right, Thomas, way to go. Way to go, <laughs> Thomas. Thomas. <laughs> 99 points for Thomas, 97 for Lyle, 96 for Keith. Uh, yeah, has anyone Cook, had Pemmican? No, yeah. I've, I've never had Pemmican. I, I hear it's not very um, tasty, but it does pack a lot of energy. So it was, uh, it was a, Pemmican trade was a well. Pardon me. Apparently, it traveled well, right? Yeah, yeah, it traveled really well. It was like the uh, the energy bar that fueled the, the fur trade, and uh, packing food was actually a, a big deal because people starved to death, you know, trying to reach places, uh, you know, all these ships and stuff. So, all right, yeah. And if anyone learned anything interesting in their Google that they want to share, just unmute yourselves and uh, and let us know. Okay. So I'm gonna move on to the next question. All right. Okay, here we go. Okay. In 1812, who whose men, Selkirk's men, began building Fort Douglas, establishing the Red River Colony? Uh, Joseph Letrand, uh, Peter Fiddler. Uh, Cuthbert Grants or the Earl of Selkirks. And just um, to give you guys some help, if you got on Google and Google took you to the Canadian Encyclopedia, uh, that's where you'll find all the answers. Uh, so I'm gonna actually put that link in the chat uh, to make things a little, little easier. So not only if you're, if you're a good Googler, if you're a good reader too, because uh, uh, we kind of base this, uh, this quiz on, on Canadian Encyclopedia web, website. I'll just uh, find that quick. I'm guessing Selkirk. Okay. Fingers crossed. Okay. 
Well, there is a place called Selkirk, just yeah. just, north, just north of Winnipeg. Okay, yeah. so you... there was a guy, I think. So. So I just put the link into the chat. Uh, if Google didn't take you to the Canadian Encyclopedia, um, go there now because you'll find the answers there. The Wikipedia page on uh, Battle of Seven Oaks is uh, pretty thin. It's uh, not a lot of info in there. There we go. Better background. Better background music going. Let's look a bit. Okay. Is it a crowd bird? Let's see what's going on here. Okay, hey, we got four boats. Okay, so we got four boats. Uh, So the correct answer was the Earl of Earl of Selkirk. Hot damn! Yeah, good, good stuff. So the Earl of Selkirk brought a whole bunch of uh, settlers from Scotland, and uh, they set up uh, a camp, uh, and then kind of started taking over everything. Uh, there were uh, Métis people. That's uh, French and, and Cree uh, mixed race uh, group, I guess. Um, they were living there already and they were uh, getting along quite well with a company called the Northwest uh, Company. Uh, and then Earl of Selkirk kind of took over everything and uh, started dividing up the land and giving away to other people. Uh, so that, that uh, really escalated a lot of uh, a lot of tensions in the area. Uh, the Métis and Northwest, Norwesters became an allied front in their economic and land struggles against the Hudson Bay Company, who uh, Earl of Selkirk was uh, aligned with. Hudson Bay Company had stuff going on all over Canada, but uh, here in Winnipeg, it uh, was uh, kind of uh, divisive, I guess is the best word for it. Okay. So we're moving on here. Next question. Okay, question three. How did the governor of the Red River Colony, Miles McDonald, further escalate tensions on January 8th, 1814? A, he issued the Pemmican Proclamation, which prohibited the export of Pemmican. Uh, B, he issued the Haldimand Proclamation, which granted a tract of land to the Hadamasse or Iroquois. Uh, C, he laid claim to Point Douglas on behalf of Lord Selkirk. So Iroquois is the settler name for that, that group. If I mispronounced it, uh, if anyone's in the, on the call who can correct me, I, I'm open to correction. I'd like to get these names right, but uh, they're a little hard for my settler tongue to wrap, wrap, uh, wrap itself around. I'm guessing A. Mm-hmm. So... Well, a lot of people uh, seem to be guessing A. There are people still thinking. I'm not saying A is the correct answer, but we've got some quick Googlers here. By the time I get the background music on, I'm, we're going to have four, <laughs> four votes here. About three. Keep thinking, folks. Keep thinking. You want to talk about what the. Uh... the different mm -hmm. uh, about what the different answers could be maybe? Well, we can do that after, yeah.
because that would give it away. Oh, we got four votes. Okay. <laughs> okay. So, um, so proud of you folks because the correct answer is A. And we got all four answers correct. So that's, that's really cool. That's really cool. Let's see who's winning. Okay, CJ Cook pulled ahead. <laughs> Woohoo. Whoops. Okay, so the, oh, uh, the questions disappeared. Uh, the correct answer was A, uh, the Pemmican Proclamation um, really didn't, uh, things didn't go over well when that was proclaimed. Uh, they were both economically dependent on the Pemmican. By they, I mean the Métis and the Nor'westers, Hudson Bay Company's uh, competition. So that was a bit of a uh, you know, thing that messed them up. Uh, the, answer, the option B, there was a Haldeman proclamation, but that had nothing to do with uh, Miles McDonald. And uh, Point Douglas um, did exist, but that, uh, that actually never happened. Uh, so there. There we go. Okay, moving on to question four. Where did the ne negotiations between Peter Fiddler, the Hudson Bay Company, or HBC uh, Postmaster, and four Métis chiefs uh, take place? A, at the Northwest Company, uh, Fort Gibraltar, which is located at the forks, or which was located at the forks of the Assiniboine Red River. Uh, B, at Fort White, a neutral location west of the Red River Colony. Uh, C, at Brandon House, Peter Fiddler's home turf. Or D, at the Chief's Camp, at La Grande Mare, uh, or Frog Plain in English. And again, if I mispronounce that French word, I'm open to corrections. I was practicing a little bit. But I'd like, yeah, if you can pronounce it better, uh, unmute yourself and uh, Share that with us. I've got a cat uh, trying to attack my feet. So <laughs> I apologize for the squirming. Okay. Got one vote in. Keep keep Googling, folks. Oh, we've got three votes in. Keep Googling, folks. Okay, every all the votes are in. Let's add them up. Okay, so the correct answer is D. Uh, the four Métis chiefs had a, um, a camp uh, and that um, there were a lot of frogs there. There is a grassy wet kind of meadow. So uh, that's why it's uh, called Frog Plain. And a little piece of that meadow remains uh, here in Winnipeg. And there's a, a park there uh, called Frog Plain Park. Or I, I went and checked it out uh, earlier this week. So. And there's actually a little bit of marsh there and some cattails and stuff in there. I could be a good place for frogs to, frogs to be. Okay, moving on to question five. So that, that treaty that was uh, signed, uh, the question is, did the HBC honor this treaty? Your options are A, why of course, it's unthinkable, unthinkably dishonorable to break a treaty. Or B, uh, no, the HBC seized and destroyed uh, the Northwest Company's Fort Gibraltar uh, to prevent the NWC from transshipping Pemmican. Okay, all the votes are in. <laughs> So everybody voted B, and the correct answer is B. Congratulations, everybody. Okay, yay. <laughs> okay, let's check the scores. Mm -hmm. 
okay, Shelly's still in the lead, but it's, uh, it's tight. And if you don't think 300 points is tight, uh, let me tell you about the lightning round, okay? Uh, just to make sure everybody's uh, in it till the end, uh, the last point, uh, sorry, the last question is worth triple the points, but you don't get any time. You get like 30 seconds to answer. So uh, when, you, when we get to the lightning round, that's your chance to catch up if you're in last place, Lyle. Not pointing any elbows, but you're, you're still in it. So you know how the lightning round works. You've been here a couple of times. So just, just go with your gut. If you answer quick, uh, you, can, uh, uh, you can score big. And the question is pretty obvious. So if you haven't answered. I did, I, I've got lucky on, the lucky on that lightning round before and gained, gained quite some ground. Yeah. If you haven't answered the question before I finish asking it, you're not doing the lightning crown, round correctly. That's, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> okay, so moving on to question six. What was uh, Culford Grant trying to do on June 19th, 1816? A, lead two groups of men from, from the West up to Frog Plain. I'll just use the English word. Uh, B, move a shipment of pemmican to their NWC partners. C, avoid an HBC gunboat on the Assiniboine as well as the heart of HBC's Red River Colony. Or D, all of the above. All right, so look it up and learn and go. Oh. <laughs> well, all the votes are in already. Well, congratulations, everybody. That's, that's, uh, you guys are quick. Okay, uh, the answer is D, all of the above. So uh, yeah, in the Canadian Encyclopedia, it describes that they're, they're trying to do everything. Okay, so we had a, a couple of people uh, answer B. Yes, they were trying to move a shipment of pemmican, uh, but they're also uh, trying to get up to uh, Front Plain, and they're also trying to avoid that, uh, that gunboat on the Assiniboine. So just for our local people, or people who uh, are curious, I'm just going to put a map here. This to kind of describes what they were trying to do. Uh, sorry, make that big enough so you can see it all. So this is uh, a big deal for Winnipeg people uh, because this is the Assiniboine River, and this is the Forks, and this is the Red River, but a couple hundred years ago. So this was all, none of this was settled, but this is all you know, the city is much bigger than this map now. Uh, for people in Winnipeg, this is, you know, the Assiniboine. So this would be uh, uh, the Wolseley area. You know, we've got the little, little curve. Uh, middle gate, the gates, yeah, middle gate and stuff is, is around here. Uh, this is called, in the map, they call it Catfish Creek. But this is, this is Omens Creek back then, okay? So Polo Park area, that, that's just, just here. And... Uh, I kind of live right there, which kind of, when I saw <laughs> Catfish Creek, that kind of was kind of cool. This is my neighborhood. So what they were trying to do is get up here uh, to meet their people so they can take the pemmican further up the Red River. Uh, but they wanted to avoid the gunboat, which is on the Assiniboine, and they wanted to avoid, uh, you know, the uh, HBC Fort, which is uh, here at the Forks. And they wanted to avoid, uh, you know, all the settlers around here because that's where the HBC settlers were. So they, they kind of took a back route, uh, trying to cross country. Yeah, they unloaded uh, pemmican. I'm assuming it was on canoe. It doesn't really say. Um, and then they went on horseback uh, to try to try to get over there. So thanks for. Oh, and this is an HBC stamp. So this this map uh, is from the HBC archives, uh, Hudson Bay Company. Who, uh, were the ones that uh, did what we're gonna learn about next. Okay, so thanks for uh, your attention there. Okay. And you mentioned Wellington, Wellington Crescent? Um, there is a Wellington Crescent in Winnipeg, yes. Yeah, yes. you mentioned it when you were talking. And you'll note that the city of Winnipeg is currently looking to rename Wellington Crescent because it's named after um, a very dishonorable gentleman who um, exploited uh, the Métis people specifically. Yes, and I share that fun fact. Yeah, yeah. Um, didn't he um, buy up all the Métis script and then speculate on it and then end up owning a whole bunch of 
the most valuable property in the city. Isn't that is that what it, what went down? Yes. Yeah. So he purposefully, um, yeah, sent out his like employees to purchase Métis script like before the ink was even dry uh, for like pennies on the dollar, and then um, ended up yeah owning large tracts personally, right? Um, yeah. And that's who Wellington Crescent's named after. Hmm. Well, it's very fitting that a uh, certain premier lives on that street. So that street is right around here on, on, the, on the, this riverfront property, but on the south side uh, where, where things are even more uh, valuable. Okay. Moving on to question seven. So we've got question seven, question eight, and then the lightning round. So here we go, question seven. One of Grant's groups was spotted by the HBC and Robert Semple, that's an HBC uh, leader, uh, led, led. Oh, crap, 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 crap. Oh, I tried to fix a typo. <laughs> Did it disappear? Oh, thank goodness, okay. <laughs> not let, led uh, a team to confront them. When everybody met up at Seven Oaks, how many were killed? Well, I panicked there when I tried to fix the typo, the whole thing disappeared, but I see it's still on your phones. Okay, so the answer is A, seven in total, all on the Métis side, uh, B, 22 in total, 21 from the HBC side and one from the Métis side. Uh, C, 44 in total, 30 on the Métis side and 14 on the HBC side, or D, 13 in total, all on the HBC side. Okay, we got three votes in. Keep Googling, folks. Keep Googling. Okay, okay, well, all the votes are in and uh, everyone voted correctly. The answer is B, uh, 22 in total, uh, 21 from the HBC side, one from the Métis side. Uh, Robert Semple was one of the ones that uh, died, the guy who led it, uh, 20 from his party, and then uh, from the Métis side, a 16-year-old uh, Métis teenager. Yeah, the, the trick, I read the trick is to uh, lay on your back and reload your gun. They think you're dead. They think they won the, won the game and they're doing touchdown things. Then you get up and shoot them all. And they get, <laughs> that'll only last 15 minutes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, uh, I guess when you lie down to reload and the other, the other team thinks, uh, the battle's over. Oh, they dropped because they're because because we won. No, they didn't. And so, yeah, when they when they came up out of the grass, uh, the element of surprise was in their favor for sure. Um, is that a poem uh, about this, or did you did you write that yourself, while it's No, that was in an article I read. Okay, I picked my real fast read through. Mm -hmm. I picked picked up on that. They laid down and reloaded their guns while they were laying on their backs, and the other guys thought they had. Uh, done really well and then all of a sudden the second rally uh ended it yeah i like the way it, way it rhymed the way you talk that was really cool <laughs> just rolled off the tongue it's beautiful okay moving on to question eight so this is be pretty pretty obvious <laughs> but uh you can get on google if you don't trust uncle lyle He's my uncle, but he's become the official uncle of the non-trivial trivia community because uh, we, we all uh, love connecting with him. <laughs> okay, we got three votes. Someone's Googling. Good, good. That, that's fine. That's fine. We want to we wanna fact check this guy. <laughs> Why did the HPC fare so poorly in battle? Uh, a, Semple's forces throughout the battle thought the battle was over and started celebrating prematurely. Uh, B, the HPC's weapons were inaccurate. Uh, C, Robert Semple fell early, leaving his forces leaderless. Or D, the HPC had personal personnel issues within the ranks as Semple's forces didn't respect his leadership. All right. 
notes. Okay, we've got four votes. And the correct answer is A. And everybody voted correctly. So way, way to go, everybody. Yay. <laughs> Okay, uh, are we ready for the lightning round? Okay, is anyone not ready for the lightning round? <laughs> okay, well, here we go. Uh, wait, before the lightning round starts, we should check the, check the scores so we know what's at stake. Let's do that. Uh, so, we can all change in an instant, but right now, uh, this is super tight. There's six points leading. <laughs> uh, First place, Thomas, and second place, uh, CJ Cook, and Shelly is in it, and Lyle is in it too, because there are a lot of points available, but not much time. So everyone's ready. Okay, one, two, three, go. After the battle, what did Culper Grant do next? A, what happened to the bombers? B, Grant seized Fort Douglas without the fort. Selkirk settlers and HBC staff led, left for Norway House. Uh, C, I always click on C, or D, I miss Matthew Perot. So, okay. So lightning round's over. I'll just uh, talk about this for a bit because this is uh, kind of a big deal. So the Battle of Seven Oaks was one of the first times uh, the Métis asserted themselves as the, a new nation uh, with rights to trade as they wish and to travel freely on their own land. Uh, there was a propaganda war following the battle. Both sides were claiming each, blaming each other for shooting first. Uh, historians now agree it was the HBC who started, started things, but that was a little up in the air because uh, you know, the winners get to write the history, but also uh, marginalized people don't get to write the history. So Hudson, Hudson Bay was writing the history, but the people who won uh, were writing the history too. So it, it was a, a bit of a mess. Um, but it's all been sorted up now. Okay, so let's see who won. Okay, way to go. CJ Cook at the, oh, just at the end, I think you were behind by six points and now you're ahead by, I, I don't want to talk over your celebrating. <laughs> Put yourself <laughs> on camera and do a little dance. <laughs> I just squeaked right in there. It was yeah. very Yeah, you sure did. Okay, well, thanks for coming, everybody. But uh, you guys can hang out if you want. I'm just, I'm going to leave the meeting ended, but I'm going to stop sharing the screen so we've got more room.